So the motor for the Dewalt milling machine is pretty much ready to go back together. Our new bearings came in the other day. In a previous video, we pressed off the old ones that were damaged, cleaned everything up, and I think we're ready to pretty much reassemble this thing. We've got to find the pieces that we need in order to press these bearings on without damaging them. Then we'll reassemble this and it'll pretty much be ready to be put back on the mill. So I got a mix of bearings here, SFK, which is American made, and Portugal, FAG. Both really good quality bearings. The small one is for the rear of the motor. And I deviated a little from the original the bearing setup. The rear bearing on this rotor had one of the rubber shields removed because there was a grease fitting uh, that was not, act you couldn't even access it. So what I decided to do is just leave the back bearing completely sealed because the front one's completely sealed and there's no way to grease it. So can't grease the back one, can't grease the front one, but these should last. I mean, they'll last my lifetime, I'm sure. So we'll get the things we need together to get these pressed on that rotor. So we're pretty much set up here, I think. We're gonna be pressing this inner race onto the shaft here, so ideally we wanna press on that inner race. That way we don't stress this bearing. You don't wanna press on the outer race, in this configuration anyway, because you transmit all that force through the bearing, through the balls of the bearing, potentially damaging the race, which I've done on a wheel bearing years ago. I had to immediately replace it. So we're not going to do that. Good to have a variety of pipe sizes at the press. That way you're you know, covered in a lot of setups. Let's see if we can't get this thing pressed on there. the other side to go that easy. So this rotor has a really nice lead-in machined to the actual uh, major OD of the bearing. So it's got a slight taper that goes from about here to right where the, uh, the major OD of the bearing seat starts. And that's really nice when you go to get a bearing started. Because some of them have sharp ledges right at the transition of sizes and they just sometimes get uh, canted when you go to press them on. So that's nice. It's on the other side as well. are on the rotor. Yes. 
I'm gonna press the rotor into the end bell. So here I'm actually loading this bearing, actually pressing through the balls of the bearing in order for this thing to be pressed into this end bell. A little heat would have been the best thing to do because you could have probably just dropped it right in there, but I couldn't find my torch at the moment. And uh, these end bells fit a lot looser um, than the actual bearing fit to the shaft, so you know, that little bit of pressure wouldn't hurt anything. I've seen equipment designed in a way that Really, I don't see how you would avoid not pressing through a bearing. And to a certain point, you know, a little bit of pressure won't hurt anything, but you start bringing hammers and stuff into the mix and, you know, giving those really heavy spike loads, and that's where you damage your bearings. Just a nice press, and those bearings can handle a lot more actually than what you would think before you really start damaging the bearing.
Yeah. Yeah. Looks good. This feels like a decent box. <laughs> nice toolbox add on. You could you push them in hard like so they won't flop open like you're moving the box around and uh, you lock it okay i was like why is it yeah. so hard yeah but most of the time you just close them like that yeah but if you want to push them in to where they won't pop open so, there we go it's in it'll hook right onto the side of the toolbox that i got and uh, raise the capacity it's nice I'm gonna put it, oh, no, I'm gonna put it on the, yeah, put it, better put it on the other side. I need you to, uh, if you would, uh, hem that up for me. Let's see how long. Just to shorten it up. You could just take it off down here. it and fold it like this overlap it kind of yeah because nobody yeah. would know i would know Shut up. i don't care <laughs> okay like yeah because i i would like to be able to yeah. see where how much Okay, can you tap that down, or can you hold hold that in, really? Yeah, hold, yeah, hold it in real hard right there. Can I let go of this um, Just here, you push the down button. Okay. Just, just barely, just real fast, just punch the button, just and let off, please. Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead, let go. Let it all the way down. That's it. It's easy enough. Loosen that clutch up in that hoist. Say hi. See, I've gotten bigger from the first one. Yeah, in you one week. Bushier. little chestnut. He's already grown in just one week. The a cutie. He's getting playful now. Yeah. So these toolboxes are surprisingly well made. All the tracks line up really good. I mean, I've had most of the drawers out of this thing just messing around with it, you know, looking at the construction of it. And uh, it's surprisingly good. I couldn't be happier with this thing. Even the side box that I just got, which is awesome. And they had this thing in stock, which is, you know, just like this kind of unheard of because they don't keep them in stock even. I just took the ticket up there because they have these boxes on display. Then they have a sleeve with the tickets on it. You can take it up to the register and you can pre-order 
the box because these things are so big they, they, they can't keep them in stock. The stores aren't big enough. So just for, for fun, I was like, well, maybe I'll get lucky. And I took one of the tickets for the red uh, side box up to the register and I said, do you happen to have this in stock? And she looked at me and smiled and she said, we don't keep those in stock, but I'll check. Sure enough, she checked and she's like, what? You know, I can't even believe it. And she says, I work here that we have that in stock. So just got lucky, basically. Uh, and that's nice. You'd be surprised how quickly you run out of space with even a box this size. So this box full of the smaller drawers, you know, mostly bigger drawers, one little side of some smaller ones, but this extra storage, nice. And that's big enough, right? I'm not going to add on to this thing anymore. Not boxes anyway. So here's a look at my old toolbox, literally falling apart. So it was time for an upgrade. I've had this thing ever since I was... It was junk when I got it. Somebody give it to me because it was garbage. Um, but I've had it since I was probably 18. So just like every oil fitting on this machine, at one point somebody's pumped grease in all of them, basically. And the two here on the head, they're no different. They're completely packed full of grease and clogged up. Now, these are made to take a light oil, and all the grease does when it's pumped in there is just clog up the works. And these fittings transmit oil back inside the head via a tube to some critical bearing or bushing that can't be reached by just a regular oil can and spout. So if we want these to ever work again, we're going to have to tear into this thing and get those cleaned out. Because uh, otherwise, you know, they'll just uh, not work. And we can't have that. So here's the two fittings. I've already loosened them. And they are completely packed full of grease. And it goes back. I need to pull this tube out. Through this tube here, back underneath the main drive pulley there, so I've just got some aluminum here. I gotta grab this brake lever and get it off. I'm assuming that it just screws, yeah, it just screws off. Because I wanna take off this top part of the casting. This thing's real dirty in there anyway. So it needs good cleaning. Completely packed full of grease. So now this can come off. So I've got to get this pulley off of here. Never had one of these off, although I have had this cap off. I believe that's how you oil the spindle bearings. And you are right in my way as well. But that's okay. 
I want you to see this. Not much room for us both up here on this uh, <laughs> lift. Anyway, there's two wicks down in here. This is an oil reservoir. See this has an O-ring. It's kind of dark up here. O-ring here and on the outside. So you just fill this with oil. Those wicks pull that down, I believe, to the spindle bearings. And you just screw this back on. So the only thing that I can see that holds this pulley on is this what looks like a nut here. You can see it has holes in it. I don't have a pin spanner, so I'm going to have to make something up. There is a pin that just about fits it. This is an eighth inch pin. These are metric holes. I don't have any metric pins. So hopefully that will work. Let's see if we can maybe get some big uh, channel box up there to open it up. So to get this out of here, I'm going to try this here. I just picked up this set of channel locks from uh, Harbor Freight, actually. They're Doyle brand. Surprised at how nice they actually are. $28 is what I paid for those. I did not have a set this size. So I'm glad I bought them because uh, otherwise wouldn't have anything to uh, get this off with. Hopefully it will come off. Brass in an attempt to not screw it all up. And I got the brake lever back in. Oh, wow, that come right loose. Okay. Those wicks just go right to there, and they put oil in that slot. Huh. There's three wicks. Having this toolbox is just amazing to me, because now all my tools actually have a spot where they can go. It's so much easier to find what I'm looking for, because my other box was falling apart, literally, and it was way too small. So this not only is a pulley, but it's a brake drum as well. There's some brake shoes in there that, uh, when you pull that handle, come out and contact the inside of this uh, pulley. And hopefully I can get this off without breaking it. It's just keyed on there. No set screw. It has to just pop off. If I put a little heat on that, just to open it up a bit. difference. 
Heat is your friend, as long as you don't use too much of it. So there's the underside of the drive pulley. You can see they've balanced it. And it's also, like I said, the brake drum. See, it's the, just like a brake drum on a car. I'll show you the brake pads up there in just a second because i got to take them off in order to get to the two spots that I need to get to. So, here's where the oil for the spindle bearings comes through. And just simply keyed on and held on with the nut we took off. So you can see the brake shoes here. we got two of them, just like you would see in an automobile. And when you pull the handle, it opens them up, presses them against the inside of that drum. You can pull it or push it, right or left, whatever you want to call it. It works just the same. So, I already got one of the two springs off. So those will come off and then I need to access these two covers here because those are what's clogged up with grease. So the two oil tubes went into a hole in each side of these caps. These are just bearing caps for the ends of these counter shafts that allow you to switch from high range to low range. So we're in high range there, which is a one to one gear ratio. Let me swap that over. And now we are in, I think it's eight to one uh, gear ratio. So that's all it is, but still those have to get oil on them or else over time, you know, those bearings would burn up. I can already tell you that this one it's been dry for a while. I can see it on the on the spline shaft there because not only does it oil this bearing here, that oil drips down onto the spline shaft that this gear moves on. So, you know, it does double duty there. Ah, I, mean, I thought I lost that one. All right. He's going to come off here. Well, yeah. Full of grease. Same, same here. There's some of the grease that I blew out of the small tubes. Just come out like a little snake. So I just used a little pipe cleaner to push through all these tubes and try to push the grease out of the end and then washed them out with some solvent. Did the same thing on the, on the two caps as well. Uh, what little bit of grease that's in the bearings that are left on the head of the milling machine, that'll, that'll get diluted as you as you put fresh oil and stuff in it, it'll work its way out. But uh, <laughs> putting grease where it's not designed to go causes a lot of work. And it's a shame, but that's the way it goes. And I would have to tear this machine down no matter what, having to rebuild it or not, simply because it's had grease put in it. So I'm sure a lot of you guys already use these. I've been using them for quite some time. I never mentioned them, but they're awesome. A box of these lasts forever. I've been using these long before I even started tearing down this uh, shop. But I went through two boxes between the time that I started tearing down this building and now. So that's how long these last, and I use them a lot. Um, you know, they say lint-free, that's not absolutely true. They don't fall apart when they're wet, which is great, and they're really strong, so. Surprisingly strong. Try those out if you're interested. They're, wor they're worth the cost, I'll say that. Wow. Pretty nasty. So that's a relatively 
intricate setup for just a power down feed. A lot going on in there. So like you'd expect after 40 years, that grease is starting to starting to separate. It's not doing like as good a job as it as it would if it was fresh grease. So while this is apart, I'd really like to pull all that out of there, not do a spot clean on it, but pull the bulk out of there, replace it with some new fresh grease. But I'm gonna have to contact the manufacturer if I can, see what they recommend, what type, you know, and how much to put inside of this uh, head. Worst case scenario, I just pull a pull out, you know, all that I can, weigh that, put that mount back in with a little extra from what I've lost. I'm going to have to do the same thing with the upper part of the head as well because it's 40-year-old uh, grease that needs replaced. So, But I'm going to have to stop on this this week. I've got other things that I have to do, unfortunately. So I've got a relatively quick lathe job that I got to do. 304 solid stainless steel blind flange for four inch pipe that I got to make for a custom application. So let's write the program and then we will uh, get this in the lathe. What's he doing? Look how big his tail has gotten in but just no time at all. So this should be a relatively straightforward machining job other than the fact that it's stainless and that can make things a little tough. But all we need to do, half inch hole all the way through, everything inside of the seal surface here is going to be dished out. We're going to have a 3 8 inch radius that runs up to the seal surface here and we're going to go down about half the thickness of this flange. We're going to create a pocket basically for liquid to gather. Now this is a 150 pound class flange. It's only going to be exposed to two bar in this application that's going to be put in or 29 PSI. So low pressure application, but that's what we need to do. So I'm going to put a couple marks on here just so I don't make any mistakes and then we'll take it over the lathe and start making some cuts. So because this is stainless and can be a little tough, I'm going to pilot drill it. It's going to take it easy. I 
not to let that drill rub to the work harden. stainless is once you get cutting you, know, you gotta keep the pressure on and keep it cutting it seems to work out better So there's the tool we're going to try, just a 3 8 radius carbide insert. So we'll try that, we'll see how that runs. We may have to hog out some material first with the standard, uh, standard uh, holder. So this first cut, actually all the cuts were 25 thousandths of an inch depth of cut. And I was really expecting this tool to chatter quite a bit, given it's such a large radius. There's a lot of tool in contact with the work here, and uh, surprisingly, it worked out pretty well. trying some of the anchor lube, see if that helps with the finish or the smoke. So far, so good. I think it looks alright. It's plenty good enough for what we need. Still got to go quite a bit deeper, but yeah, it's going to work as long as that continues. This anchor lube is working pretty good.
All right. That's it. That looks pretty good. A little bit of chatter in the bottom of that radius, but that is a big radius in stainless, right? To cut all at once. I'm very happy with that. So that looks perfectly fine to me. There is no requirements on surface finish on this thing. It literally is just a void. So that will be perfectly fine. I'm surprised it turned out as good as it is, considering how big that radius is. So let me show you what I've been doing in my in my spare time this week, which is uh, very limited. This is the carburetor off of a Kawasaki engine that's on a zero-turn lawnmower that's out here. Mine belongs to my neighbor, and it had set for quite some time with fuel in it. It's never a good thing. Gummed up and won't run, so that's a little side job, along with a lot of other stuff that I've been doing this week. Let me show you how much progress that I've made uh, working around the shop trying to get things straight. So I got the front left corner of the shop relatively straight. I spent two afternoons this week going through just trying to get everything cleaned and organized. This was the, by far the worst area of the shop. Now I did work on this a little in the past, but finally decided just to go through and get everything at least really close to the way I want it. I'm still going to put cabinets up on the wall here. I've got some stuff that's just in storage underneath the welding bench for now until that happens. Got my grinders all cleaned up and over in their somewhat final spot. I'm also getting the cutter grinder lined out and the surface grinder lined out to get them hooked up, which is still, you know, probably a couple weeks off, but all I like is this area of the shop right here in the middle. I'll turn the camera around and show you. So I can finally see the finish line and I'm really close to being completely operational again. There's still a lot to do, but uh, not near as much as what there was. It was somewhat overwhelming. Imagine every tool that you own being shoved over into a corner, covered in dirt, dust, and over a year of setting unused rust and having to clean all that stuff, organize it, you know, finding new homes for it because everything's changed. It's just been an amazingly large job that I'm glad that that's coming to an end. Moved the cutter grinder out a little bit, kind of wiped it off. It's going to be pretty much in that location. Got to turn the surface grinder 90 degrees. Move the K&T a little bit. Obviously, move my cabinets and stuff to their final position and hang some more cabinets. But it's getting really close. Um, the major work is pretty much done. Now it's just final placement and uh, power. So it's coming, lot, coming along. I've spent a lot of time this week just moving stuff around. So I don't know anybody who would say their shop is done. I know a lot of people whose shops are functional but still a work in progress. And uh, you know that's kind of where I'm at and probably where I will be for a, quite some time. But at least once all my machines are back working again, you know, I'll be at the point that I was before the teardown of this wall and half the shop started, which will feel good. So that's it. Next couple weeks, I'm going to focus on getting to that point, <laughs> hanging the cabinets and hooking up these two machines. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me get here. And uh, I appreciate it. We all appreciate it more than you know. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower on your own. Hoping to break through the storm